Two months ago, this place was bare ground, dust and demolition. Today, steel is rising, concrete is being prepared and the first permanent parts of this flyover are taking shape. This is no longer just preparation, this is construction. And what you are about to see is the moment when this flyover truly begins to exist. We are, we are starting the apartment now, this is the new apartment. Hello everyone, welcome back to Lantus TV. Today, I'm back on the Adesu Wasapele Road flyover construction site to give you the latest update on this groundbreaking project. It's been two months since my last update on this project and so far, significant progress has been made. In this video, I'm going to show you what has changed since the last update, what is being built at the moment and what we should expect in the coming months. Before we proceed, for those of you joining us for the first time, my name is Lantus. And Atlantis TV will provide in-depth coverage of infrastructure across Africa. If you want to see infrastructure projects shaping our cities, subscribe and turn on your notifications so you don't miss out on any of our updates. Let's dive in. Before we look at where the project is now, let us quickly rewind two months and see how this site looked back then. At the time, what we saw here was mainly site clearing, demolition of structures along the alignment, evacuation of electricity infrastructure by BEDC and installation of precast concrete drainage. The ground was being prepared, services were being moved and the site was being made ready, but there was no visible structures yet. That stage is extremely important because without it, nothing permanent can be built. But it is also the stage that looks slow and unimpressive to the public because all the work is on the ground behind the scenes. Now, let's take a look at what has changed since our last update. Stay tuned. Now, let us come back to today. What we are seeing now is the transition from preparation into actual structural construction. Three major things are happening at the same time. One, the drainage construction is nearing completion. Two, the service lane and access road are taking shape. Theory, the abutment and retaining wall foundation works have begun. Let us take a close look into the drainage construction. Proper drainage is critical for a flyover. If water is not controlled, it weakens the soil, damages foundations and shortens the lifespan of the structure. That is why you see long lines of concrete drains being installed along the alignment to ensure that rainwater is properly directed away from the structure. Next is the service lane. This is the road that will run other needs and alongside the flyover, allowing local traffic to continue moving while through traffic goes over the bridge. It also ensures that businesses, homes and side streets remain accessible after the flyover is completed. Now we come to the most important part of the current work, the retaining wall and the abutment. The retaining wall holds back the soil and supports the elevated road structure. The abutment is what supports the end of the flyover deck. It is the structure that receives the load of the bridge and transfers it onto the ground. Right now, the construction team is setting up the reinforcement roads. This is the steel skeleton that gives the concrete its strength. I spoke with one of the workers, tying the steel, and asked what sizes they are using. Let's hear directly from him. How many mm rods do they use? We they use 32 mm, 25 mm, 20 mm, and 16 mm. So right now, now they, now they work on the computer for retaining water. Yes, we are, we are starting the abutment now. This is the new abutment. These are heavy structural bars used only in major load bearing construction. The thicker rods take the main load, while the smaller ones provide distribution and stability. Unlike the Ramat Park flyover, 
which began with vertical pillars. The Adesua flyover is starting with the retaining walls and the abutments first. This is a different engineering approach, choosing based on the ground conditions, traffic management and site constraints. From what we can see, one side of the retaining wall foundation is already complete and the other side is currently being prepared. The team expects that before the end of the month, the foundation will be completed on one side and then they will move to the other side. From above, you can see how large this project really is. You can see the drainage lines, the service lanes, the headworks, and the retaining wall alignment, all forming the footprint of what will soon become a major flyover structure. This project is not just about reducing traffic here, it is about reshaping how Benin City moves. It connects the city center to the Sapele and Delta corridors. It supports trade, commuting, and economic flow. Over the coming months, we expect to see completion of abutment, casting of retaining walls, construction of bridge deck supports, beam installation, and eventually the launching of the flyover deck itself. What makes this project even more important is that it connects directly with the ongoing reconstruction of the Benin Sapele Road. As that road approaches this junction, the flyover becomes the centerpiece that ties everything together. This is how infrastructure works, not as isolated projects, but as a system that supports each other. So this is where we are today. The flyover has moved from preparation into true construction. Steel is being tied, concrete is about to be poured, and the foundation of the structure is being formed. I will continue to be here, documenting every stage so you can see exactly how your city is changing. If you have watched to the end, thank you. It means you care about the future of Benin City. Please like, share, and subscribe to Lantus TV so you don't miss the next update. When we
last week on cashing 